You may be on mute. Thank you. I wanna say thank you to Burlington and Robert and Coabe and James um, and to everyone who was with us last week and came back for this week. And those of you who are new this week, it's gonna be fine. Um, we're just digging into some of the tools that we used last week and doing a little bit of how-to with them. So um, without any further ado, let's get started looking at the details. And like James said, I'm Mary Gaston. There's my contact information and I'll throw it back up at the end as well. Our objectives for today are pretty simple, but do know that I like to put these back up at the end. And then I ask you if you think we accomplished what we set out to do, but we wanna become more familiar with some popular digital tools that are used to engage learners and also to curate some multimedia resources. We also want everyone to select at least one new tool that they can implement with their learners and then draft a plan for next steps. We know that if we actually take the time to think through some concrete steps, then we're more likely to put these tools to use. Little bit of housekeeping. Those of you who've been with me before know I like to put some little signals in places throughout the uh, slide deck. But um, when I need uh, or, or hope that people will chat something, you'll see that. When we're going to take a poll, you may see this. Um, but one of the more important things that I want to show you right now is the webinar handout and how I like to do that. I like to use a tool called Wakelet, and Wakelet is a collection. It's a way to curate resources, and they can be multimedia resources. So when I talk about a Wakelet, I'm simply talking about a collection. So I'm going to drop the link in a minute to this Wakelet, and then you will have everything, all the resources from this webinar right here you would click and that would take you to a PDF copy of the slides. The slides are hyperlinked, but you'll also have this long list of resources that we're gonna talk about today. And so you can, whatever suits your style, if you're a little more linear and wanna do it this way, you can scroll down through it, or you can use the slide deck. And to get that, you would just navigate to this wakelet and then click on that link. So if you're familiar with Wakelet as an owner of one or a user of one, there's a little button up here that says share. I'm going to click that and it gives me all these different ways that I can share this collection with you. So I'm going to hit copy and then I'm going to come down to the chat box and I'm going to drop that into the chat for you guys now. Those of you who've been with me before know the more I talk, the thirstier I get. So I drink a lot of water during webinars. So you now have the link. And um, if others can help me, if people come in and they're looking for the link, if y'all can copy that and share it with others, that would be great as well. Now, I promised that one of the things that I was going to share today is how to do this, how to curate resources. So I'm logged in to my Wakelet account. You're, um, you can set up an account with an email. You can use your, uh, your Google account, your Microsoft account. Um, it's free, uh, no cost. And um, I'm going to click on home. Takes a minute. And I'm going to click create a new collection. And I am just going to call this sample wakelet. And I am going to, let's just choose from the library, a picture that we can put there. I think I found the palm tree, yes. So now I have some decoration. Also, I can come over here to settings and I can add a background image, something I upload or something I choose from my library. Let's, um, Let's see, we did a palm tree. Let's see if we see some water. I won't look forever, I promise. Let's make it interesting here. 
We'll do another palm tree. And then you can put a description. And then when you want to add something, my mouse is acting a little funny today, not wanting to play. So I am going to hit the little green plus sign right here. And that is going to allow me to paste a URL to add some text. I can in, uh, embed a video. Um, I can add a picture. I can upload a PDF or I can get something from my, one of my drives. So let's just to show you how easy it is. Let's see if it will add Padlet for us. That's one of the tools. Um, and I love the positive comments that Padlet always um, adds there. Let's say I want to add some text. So it opens up a text box. It's very simple formatting here. And uh, check out, let's do this, check out the link to the Padlet below. Let us know what you think. And of course, I have a typo. Hit done. And then I go, oops, the Padlet's up here. My text is down here. As long as you're in edit mode, all you have to do is hover and you have these arrows that appear on the side and you can move things up and down. There's different layouts. I tend to go with the linear one, but there's some grid ones. Um, you can check those out if you're interested in those. So I've added a couple of things just to show you how easy it is. And when you're in edit mode, all you have to do is hover over one of these pieces. It will allow you to delete it or it will allow you to edit it. And then I'm gonna, it tells me my changes have been saved, but this reminds me, if you have this set on private, you're not gonna be able to share it like I did the link earlier to the resources. You need to change it to at least unlisted. That lets you share it with the link. If you change it to public, that would let people search for it, um, search by topic for it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put unlisted and I'm gonna put, show you how you can make it copyable. If you wanted to allow people to copy your Wakelet, you would turn that feature on right there. And so um, no one's gonna to wanna to copy this and no one's gonna to wanna to see it. So um, I'm gonna go back and make it private. And if it's private, just so you know, you can't copy it. I'll come back in and delete this one later, but I'm gonna click done. And that's as easy as it is to make a wakelet. I come right up here and um, pick up my link, but of course it's saying it's private. I think it'll let me share that here. Yes, change it here. So then I could pick up the link and share that crummy wakelet that I just built. Do know that if you copy other people's, you can name them what you want and then they will show up in your home. And that's where, this is the one we just built. Easy, right? If you think that was easy, uh, chat, a, chat a why for yes to us in the chat box. Great. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close out Wakelet and get back to our presentation. This next slide has links. There's a remote learning guide that's just a one pager. And then there's the Wakelet educators guide. And these are both linked on the slide, but they're also included in that Wakelet collection that I shared with you earlier. Engagement isn't a thing. It's the only thing. Um, I don't know if I believe that all the time, but I believe it when I'm talking about engaging students. And we know that sometimes it's harder to do it online than it is when we're in the same space and time with students. So we have to, seems like we have to work a little harder about how we're gonna make that happen. Um, I participated in a webinar a few months back and uh, was reminded that people's um, attention span is much shorter online than it is when we're doing face-to-face. -face. And the problem with that too is, let's say your attention span may be three, four minutes. 
everybody's on a different cycle. So you've got part of the people in that four minutes and then you've got some who are outside. So en engagement is something worth thinking about. I looked up the definitions of engagement and there were a lot, including the one with the ring. But I picked out four that I thought really applied to what we're talking about today. And that meant to hold the attention of to provide occupation for, to induce to participate, and to bring together and interlock. And that's why I chose the puzzle piece there. This one was my favorite one. Building that connection among the learners, building that sense of community is going to help them want to persist and help them feel that sense of belonging. All right, um, we have a lot of tools. We're not going to have time to get to all of them. So I thought one of them I really wanted to share was how I do the polls. Some of you have participated in the polls that I do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to build a poll in front of you that will help us decide which tools we're going to look at first. Okay, sound like a plan. So this is my Mentimeter account, and I'm already logged in, so I'm going to go to my presentations. These are all, some of them I put in folders, some of them I got loose down here, but I'm going to create a new presentation. So I click here, and let's name it... Um, I'm having trouble thinking of a good name. Um, help us choose. How about that? And all I did was type in the name right up here. It's located at home. This is the name of it. Now I get to choose a slide type. What I want you to help me do is to rank the tools that we have left. Yes, Mentimeter is a free tool. There are some features that are not available in the free, but I'm still using the free. The hat hadn't quite hooked me yet to, to pay a subscription. So I'm going to choose, you've got all these templates over here. I'm going to choose ranking because that's what I want you guys to do. I'm going to put all the tools up there and you're going to put which one you want first, second, third. So I'm going to click ranking. And when I do that, I need to put a question. You know, there's a universal law that you can't type when people are watching. Rank these tools in order of your interest. And you have the ability to add a graphic or a GIF onto your slides, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fool with that today. I'm just gonna enter some of the tools. We got Bingo Baker. We've got Quizzes. We've got Padlet, we have Google Forms. Told you we had a lot. We have Ed Puzzle, Flipgrid, and one more. Got to move my chat box there. Boost Chase. Um, most of these are self-explanatory, um, but uh, Rather than go over each of them, just shoot for the stars and pick the one. And you don't have to rate all of them unless you want to. It looks like I may have skipped one. Got Goose Chase, Flipgrid. I forgot Quizlet. All right. I don't know why it did that. Let's go to share. And I want to point this out anyway. Once you get your um, presentation built, then you go up to share. And there are different ways you can share it. You can copy a link. You can scan a QR code. The way I've been using it a lot lately is to let people put the digit code in. It automatically shows up at the top of your presentation. 
Um, also right here, it says this is gonna expire in two days. You can always go to expand and you can, you can make it last up to seven days. This is the paid feature. Anything with the little green the star, that is the paid feature. So let's see if I can get out of this uh, trap I'm in here. Um, go ahead and do this. All right. And we've got it set and I'm gonna hit present. And so, if you guys will go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I dot C-O-M, and use the code 20, 22, 26, and zero, and start to rate the tools, that will help us decide where we're going to go next. Now we're starting to get some results. And while that is going on, I'm going to, don't worry, if you haven't done it yet, just keep working on it. I'm going to come back to it before I go with the results. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and tell you about another, about some other information. All right, last week I talked to you about an infographic that exists on uh, the Universal uh, Design for Learning website that CAST has, CAST.org. And if you remember, if you were with us, it was an infographic and I shared just the headings. That first heading was about providing multiple means of engagement. And it goes back to some of the attention spans, some of people's feelings about different kinds of engagement, what's engaging to one person might frighten another one. And so it's important for us to think about, we need a variety. We need to provide multiple options for engagement. So I'm gonna jump out to the website, UDL guidelines. You'll see that, you know, the three headings were engagement, representation, action, and expression. So let's look at engagement. There are three guidelines under engagement. This one's recruiting interest, sustaining effort and persistence, and self-regulation, helping to build those intrinsically motivated um, learners, uh, lifelong learners. Each one of these this is the guideline. These are the checkpoints. Each one of these has more specific information. So you can read more about providing choice and autonomy for your learners. You can read about making things relevant and authentic for them so that they value it. And you can read about minimizing threats and distractions. And all of that was under recruiting interest right here. So on your own time, you can come back and look at what's gonna help here, the kinds of things we need to be thinking about when we're trying to engage our learners and also self-regulation. This is such a rich website. I do encourage you to explore it more. Also, while people are finishing up that poll, let's talk for a minute about meeting room tools. Meeting room tools um, are going to be different depending on your platform, but they're going to be mostly the same. Um, so I'm going to talk about these. I'm more comfortable with Zoom. I'm more of a veteran using Zoom. I have used some of the others, but you, if you're using a different one, you can chat out how that might be different in on a different platform if you want, or just make the connection on your own. But one of the things we like to do is pass the microphone. We always want to be respectful of our learners. Some of them may not want us to hear what's going on in the background, and we need to respect that. Some of them may not want us to see what, what's on the camera. We need to respect that. Um, but there are some activities if people are willing that can um, make a lot of connections among the students. Using the camera um, can be great. Um, 
I teach a, a graduate class of adult educators. And a couple of weeks ago, we were making sure, at, we, we use Zoom, and we were making sure everybody knew how to get the gallery view on the screen. And there were two people who didn't. And um, they didn't tell us. We were just giving the instructions, assuming that maybe there were a couple people who didn't know how to do that. And in the reflections that we read later, they said it was like it just opened this whole door of opportunity, thinking about what could be done when everyone is looking at each other at the same time. But you can use that to have students answer. They can write something on paper and hold it up. They can um, use fingers. Uh, one of the games we played was, um, I won't call it a game, it was an activity. We were learning Google Slides. So we did a collaborative Google Slide um, activity where everyone went to the same slide deck and grabbed a template that I created and they added personal information to it. And then they made up three things about themselves. Two of them had to be true. One of them had to be a lie. I'm sure many of you have played that. When we came back into the room, we took turns sharing our screen. No, not for that activity. That's another one um, later on. But I shared my screen and did the presentation. They passed the microphone and narrated theirs. Then looking at the whole gallery, people held up which finger for which ones they thought were the truth and the lie. Chat and QA, it's great the way that CoAbe does this on the webinars. Try to put um, questions in Q&A and um, uh, make it kind of like a parking lot that you come back to and using chat as an engagement tool. Using the whiteboard, um, it's very primitive in Zoom, but it can be a lot of fun because all your participants can be typing or drawing on it at the same time. And that, that is fun. We did that as a joint activity. And then we put people in pairs. They went into a breakout room and illustrated a digital standard on their whiteboard, saved it, then came back out and shared it to the group. All right. So hopefully... Um, everyone's had a chance to, I um, think we got a few more doing uh, the, the graph, but so far, this is the way it's looking. And we'll give it, I saw just a few more show up in the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this slide. These are some of my favorites and many of them were on the poll. Um, and uh, Quiz is and Kahoot are very similar, so I chose to do just one of them. All right, we're going to have to go ahead and get the direction we need to go in. So we're going to, we're going to mark Flipgrid um, as number one, and watch, as soon as I do this, it's going to change. Add Puzzle as number two, Bingo Baker as number three, Quiz is as number four, Google Form five, Boost Chase six, Padlet seven, I about worn Padlet out, I think, and Quizlet eight. I think those are ones probably more people know about. So that is where we will go first to Flipgrid. Now, I could not guess. Um, which way you guys were going to go. And there was one that I reserved the right to do anyway. Um, and that is Flippity, because that was a new one for me. All right, we're going to do Flipgrid. Flipgrid is a tool that you can use to, gener uh, to, to uh, get a discussion going, but it is a video discussion. So I am going to... Um, I think what I need to do here, I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna drop it into the link, I mean into the chat, <laughs> drop the link into the chat. All right, and I am gonna go ahead. This is what it should look like when you get to Flipgrid, but it is gonna ask you to log in using either a Microsoft, I believe, or a Google account. If you choose to do this activity, then um, you, it will probably ask you, can it use your device's camera? 
Okay, we did this yesterday with some folks in South Carolina. They'll probably kill me when they find out I showed it. Um, but if you make a video and put it out there, you know that someone is going to watch it sometime. But the prompt for this that uh, I, I want people to do if you decide to do this activity, and I'll model how to do it, what is your best strategy for engaging students? Be sure and tell us your name and the name of your program or where you're from. Come on, you know you want to get out of your comfort zone. So I'm going to click record a response. I'm going to join with my Google account. All right, this is, um, I think I have to turn my camera off for a minute and tell it to retry. There we go. So now as soon as I click this, it's going to start recording me. If you've never done this before, it's probably going to ask, does it have permission to use your device's camera? Before I get started, I want to put a frame around myself that's sparkly. I'm in a sparkly mood. So there we go. Got a frame around myself. I'm going to click it. And these are 15 second videos. Hi, my name is Mary Gaston. I'm coming to you from Easley, South Carolina. My favorite way to engage students is to get them talking. So I stopped. I'm going to hit next. Hi, my name is Mary Gaston. I'm coming to you from Easley, South Carolina. My favorite way to engage students is to get them talking. So see, it gives you the opportunity Hi, to Hi, my name is Mary Gaston. Then, I've got to move the right way. It wants to take a selfie. And then it uploads my video and I submit it and now it will show up. So hopefully, as we continue to go through the um, webinar today, some of you will jump out and do this Flipgrid. The neat thing about it is um, we got some people who say they use it. That is great. Um, you can post feedback and it will email feedback to the students. Uh, students can do video responses back and forth to each other. So it's a great way to generate um, discussion. We did it too at the end of um, uh, our first totally online DigLit graduate class through College of Charleston. And um, we asked them about their experience. Then we ended up using some of those to try to promote the class again for the fall, which worked really well. You can think about ways to use that with your students. So again, we hope we get some more people who add some videos and I'll jump back into the presentation. I told you that I was gonna reserve the right to do Flippity. And I will do that um, really quick. I thought about using a Flippity tool to um, tell us which tool we were going to look at today. And then I said, no, I think I'd rather use the poll and let you guys tell me which one. So you can see that it would already be going in a different direction. So I'm glad we did what we did. I'll tell you about Flippity. I, it, it was one of those I had not discovered. Um, because I always thought of it as a flashcard tool and I already had a flashcard tool. But when I went to check it out, uh, probably a month or two ago, I found out it has so much more to offer. So there's a QR code here I can come back to and I'm also gonna drop a link. Yes, you can go ahead and do step one. That should be the first thing. And when you're on um, Flipgrid, it's going to let you um, look, it's kind of screen your video. And then it's going to, when, when you hit the next button, it's going to ask you um, to take a picture, a selfie. And then you have to hit submit at the very end for it to show up. This is one of the Flippity activities. So I put the, um, the join code. I'll come back to that in a minute. I put the link to the Flippity in the chat box. If you want to play, I'll show you what it's about. This is a four question scavenger hunt and it asks questions. Now, um, if you were to put 10 in here and hit enter, it's going to make this little sound like the lock's trying to unlock, but it won't. If you put the right answer in and hit enter, 
the lock will unlock. And you're trying to get all four of them unlocked. Some of them might have a hint. That's this little light bulb. So if you don't know what the answer to this riddle is, you could click the hint button. At the end, when you've got all four locks unlocked, it's going to throw up a little, it looks like a little piece of notebook paper. You click that and it has your results, but it does show if you used um, a hint to get one of the answers. But if you wanted to do that, it doesn't have a way to set up a class. There's not even an expanded version that costs. Um, but if you wanted to use it with students and get their results, you could have them take a picture, you could have them print their screen. But um, this is just one of the kinds of flippities that are available. If you want to play with it, you go right ahead and play with that. I'm going to click on, um, these are all of the templates they have built. And really what it's about is taking a Google spreadsheet and making it into something cool. It, and again, this is what I first knew about were the flashcards. But that randomizer wheel that I built, that came from here and that scavenger hunt came from here. So it's very easy. You click on the template. It forces you to make a copy of the template. This, um, these are the questions for that scavenger hunt. I didn't use all of them. These are the hints. These are the answers. Then down at the bottom, you have two more tabs. These are some options that you can set. And then there's a place to get the link. Now I'm the kind of person that I don't read the instructions usually before I start. So I got this far and I went, I'm missing a step somewhere. Went back to the instructions and I found out when you're gonna use Flippity, you always need to go to file and you need to publish it to the web, okay? Then you can pick up your link. But each one of these has a demo, it has instructions and it has a template. And I'm gonna jump back out to Flipgrid and we do have someone who has joined us there. This is the code to join, 57611DEO. There you go, 57611DE. I'm guessing that's a zero since the other letters are lowercase. All right, we need to get on to Ed Puzzle. Edpuzzle is a way to take video and make it a less passive activity. You can take video that you have created yourself, or you can use YouTube videos, TED Talk videos, National Geographic videos, and you can crop them. You can insert questions into them, and you can do voiceover. If you create a class, which I'll show you in a minute, it actually provides feedback on the folks who have used your Edpuzzle videos. Um, yeah, I wanna come back to that. Um, Edpuzzle help and how to. Um, if you click here, and there's also a link to it in the Wakelet, I love little short videos and that's how they do their um, how to's on there, their instructions. So this will take you there. It's also in the Wakelet, but I'm going to jump out just to add puzzle. Uh, these are trending in South Carolina right now. These are trending in the United States. You have all these sources that you can pick video. And again, you can use your own video. I did want to point out these. They don't have any questions in them. And the way I can tell that are these little teardrop things, upside down teardrops, I guess. This one has 11 questions built into it, or it could be notes. This one has eight. But the nice thing about Edpuzzle, like so many of these tools, they let you, people can turn on a copy link that allow you to copy, just like in um, Wakelet. And so you can copy other people's work. Then you can change the questions if you want to or move the questions um, up to you how you do it. But I'll show you what can be done with it. I created a class this summer when I was showing some of our um, adult ed teachers 
what Edpuzzle would do. This is Hi, Mary, I think you might have accidentally muted yourself. Thank you. I had a little um, exclamation point there. <laughs> I was like, ooh, what do I do? Um, so these, I don't know how far to go back. Um, I was telling about the information you can get from the videos after people have watched them, but you can also look at it question by question. So you can see, you might want to think about how that question's being asked if a lot of people miss it. Um, back to the students, I'll show you what, uh, just a short clip of how the video looks when um, it is being played. cells so now you can't exchange I'm oxygen drag it back. and if depending 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 on the type of spike it allows that virus to attach to certain places so some viruses they have the spike that attaches to your nose so basically you just get a common cold but the SARS virus and this new virus that we're talking about has the spike that allows it to attach to the cells in your lung so that is an example of the question popping up now this has already been answered but a student would check now they would have the option to rewatch and then it scores it immediately and then they can hit continue. Now there is a toggle switch when you make an assignment of one of these videos that you can prevent them from going forward until they answer it correctly. Or you can flip that off and let them move ahead. And when it attaches there, it puts in information. To make I wanted to show you that Every place there is one of those little green teardrops down here, that's where a question is. So again, we took this, it was probably less than a five minute video, but just for demonstration purposes, we cropped it on either end. And just to show you um, very easy how you drop those questions in. That is Edpuzzle. And number three, I believe is Bingo Baker. And that one is right here. Bingo Baker, I discovered last spring and have had a lot of fun with it. It is a way to create customized digital bingo cards and share them digitally, no printing involved. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go to Bingo Baker and I do not use the paid account, which means that all of them that I create have to be public. That's fine. There are thousands of them, and I don't mind if anyone wants to use mine. It can be a five by five, four by four, or three by three. You title it here. You can change the headings. Um, you can tell it if the free always needs to stay in the center. Change the background, the text, the grid lines, color, and thickness. Down here, this is where, let's say, uh, right now it's a five by five. So let's say you have more than 24 things you want to use on your bingo card. You can add the extras down here. And when it randomizes those cards, it's going to pull from here as well. So let me show you how easy this is. I'm in a square. You'll notice that when I click in a square, this toolbar comes up. Let's say that I want to insert a picture. I'm going to go to my pictures. And let's say I want to drag Google Forms right there. Let's say that I want to drag a microphone, um, Flipgrid. It's as easy as that. Or you can type. You can um, change the color of the square, and then you can change the color of the type. 
These just tell you where you want it, you know, move to the top in the center or toward the bottom. Once you get your bingo card done, all you do is hit generate. I'm not going to generate because I don't want to, I don't want to throw this crummy one into the library of bingo cards, but I'll show you what it looks like by clicking on one I made earlier. Um, if I copy that and drop it into the chat. You can click on it and you will get a different card than what I get, but you will be able to see how students can mark it. If they're on a desktop, they click in the square and that's how they mark their card. If they're on a tablet, they can touch the square and that's how. And then it has instructions if you're going to use it maybe throughout a week. You know, you want to um, make sure that you bookmark it so you can get back to it. Because you want to, if, if you're using it over multiple days, you want to make sure you get to the same bingo card that you had before. So that is Bingo Baker. But you just use that one link to send it out to your students. However, you're going to do that through email or chat box or learning management system. And everyone that clicks on it's going to get a randomized card. You got the generate card message. Will students get that too? Yes. They will click on that generate. And then that's what's going to give them their card. And when it does that, it randomizes. Someone said Nearpod also um, has a similar feature to what Edpuzzle does. That's great. All right, I am, what number are we on now for quizzes? All right, I think quizzes goes this way. And it does, sometimes we're lucky. Quizzes is a, um, a quiz kind of game, um, can be used for formative assessment. Kahoot uh, came out earlier and I was a big fan of it. I do have some things that I like better about quizzes. In the early days, I haven't gone back to Kahoot and looked, but it would put the questions and uh, answer choices on a screen that the students were looking at. And then they had to choose a color and a shape on their device. And when I first did quizzes, I really enjoyed that because it put everything on the student's device. Now, this is not something we're going to play today. You can play it today, but we're not going to play it as a group. I set this one up as a homework assignment, and I think it's open until October the 9th. It won't let you do it indefinitely. But if you want to see what it's like to take a quiz is, you can go to joinmyquiz.com and you can put this code in 101-668-64. Now, if you want to do it later, you can because you'll have this slide deck and you can come back and get that code to put in. But that is a, a quiz about coronavirus that the editors at Quiz Is made. Again, the sharing is incredible. Um, if you're going to be a new user to Quiz Is, that might be the way you want to start out, is finding one you like. I always put a caution in there. When you're copying someone's, make sure that um, it reflects what you want it to. So check the answers, check the questions, check the typing. Um, and then if you like this one and you want to copy, I have a link here that allows you to, as long as you have an account, it will make it your copy. And then you can add questions, delete questions, however. Um, this is a slide deck that was um, provided by Quizzes that I have linked for you. So you have it. And it just talks about what Quizzes is completely free what makes it different. I love the self-paced, you know, we didn't do it um, where it was going to be a speed thing. We did it as a homework assignment and everybody can do it on their own time. Better data and feedback. So it analyzes the results and help, helps you use it as a formative assessment. When you're playing, if you do decide to use that link and you're playing, they have this feature too where you earn these power up things that then you can use maybe to uh, when you miss one, it'll you can pull out that power up and use it so you don't get penalized, things like that. Um, and this here's here's what I loved about it. 
Um, no need to be near board. Students are reading questions from their own device. Talks about the kind of data and feedback that you can get. And of course, how you can use it with Google Classroom. This talks about how it works. Millions of teacher created quizzes that you can choose from. So there are search filters help you find and customize. And I believe that's the way I got started before I went to creating my own. Oh, I love this. It does have the equation editor, which makes it a lot better for those of you who teach math. I know in Google Forms, I have to use an extension called Equatio in order to do the math problems and the three different ways that you can use it. And here's another one that you can test drive and play if you want to. So again, that is available in the Wakelet, that slide deck I just showed you, but it's also available within this slide deck. You can come back, there's a blog talking about remote learning and there are lots of teacher resources as well. All right, we are to Google Forms. I'm going to get a drink of water. Yes, you can play Quiz Is as a competition, and you can play live while in a synchronous session. Yes, all of those are options. There were some other questions up here. I think I may have missed one, but I'll look, I'll look closer later. We'll jump back in and go to um, Google Forms. I think that one is this way. Yes, Google Forms. I love Google Forms. And some of the projects, I don't know if you're familiar with what's coming from CrowdEd Learning now. We did something similar in South Carolina with math lessons. And um, they have done hundreds. We didn't do hundreds, but they've done hundreds of reading lessons using Marshall Library's reading skills for today. And they have used Google Forms as the assessment. Now in South Carolina, we did that with math wakelet lessons and we used the Google Form as the assessment. And if a student demonstrates mastery on that, our state office has approved um, proxy hours for those lessons. So lots of um, opportunity to do things with Google Forms. I am going to jump out into, now don't judge me. It's been a busy couple of weeks and my Google Drive might be messy. Um, there's my lovely grandchildren that I'm missing terribly. Um, but this is my Google Drive. And um, I think I created, yes, a practice folder. I'm gonna open that. I am going to go, there's lots of different ways. You know that about Google. You can do things through the waffle or the nine dots of awesome. You can type in, you know, that you want to go to forms. This is the way I like to do it because I like to start in the folder where I want things to be, especially with Google forms. Now, this was really nice. For the longest time, Google forms did not show up when you click the new button. You had to come down here and go over, but finally it has, it has made it to the top tier. It is on that first menu. So I'm gonna click Google Forms and do know that if you expand out, you have a choice of starting from scratch or using a template in order to create. And because we are short on time, I'm just gonna write sample quiz up here. I'm titling it. And when I click down here, it just transfers that. Now, if you are creating somewhere else and want to then move it to a folder, you have the option to do that right here. I am going to say, what is your first name? I always like to separate it so I can um, alphabetize by the last name when I collect. These are I think of it as, as a collector, I'm collecting information. A Google form is something you can use as a poll, as a survey, or you can use it as a quiz. So I'm gonna show you real quick because that's how most teachers wanna use it. I'm gonna show you real quickly how to make a quiz out of a form. So I make this required by clicking this button right here. This is a short answer, Google reads my mind. I'm gonna click 
the plus sign to add another question. And guess what? I'm going to ask them, what is your last name? See, it changed all by itself. I'm going to hit required. If I mess up, I can delete. If I, want, if I have a complicated question that I want to duplicate and then edit, I can do that right here. Um, Jeff Gumas, he showed me how to import questions from old quizzes, which saved me hours on a project I was working on. You can embed graphics and video as well. I'm going to do another question. What is two plus two? And we're going to make that, oh yes, let's do that multiple choice. So it's giving me an option here. I'm going to put six. I'm going to put four and I'm going to put two. Um, I'll add one more. What is the correct spelling? See if I can spell correctly to do it. R-E-C-E-V-E. R-E-C-I-E-V-E. -E -E. Or guess what? R-E-C-E-I-V-E. -E. All right, I'm going to make this one required. I don't think I made that one required. So now I have a quiz. If I were ready to use this as it is, I could um, set up a collector for the responses. So up here, those are the questions I built. Here are the responses. I'm going to tell it that I want to create a spreadsheet to collect when my students do that quiz. So I click on create spreadsheet. It's going to name it the same thing that I named my quiz, but it's going to have responses beside it and it's going to be a Google sheet. So I'm going to tell it to create and watch up here. This is the spreadsheet. It's going to date and time stamp any of the input that goes into that form when I send it to students. But let's make it even better. I'm going to go to questions. I want to make this a self-scoring quiz. I'm going to click settings. I'm going to click quizzes. I'm going to turn that on. Then you have a lot of options. You can tell it to re release the grade immediately. You can let them look at miss, correct answers and point values. Um, so I'm gonna click save. Then how does it know the right answer? Google's smart, but it's not that smart. We have to tell it the right answer. So I'm gonna, this is the, what is two plus two? I'm gonna go click on answer key and I'm gonna check the correct answer. You can provide feedback for incorrect answers and for correct answers. You can link them to a lesson they need to go back to or insert a video that they need to watch. And then you save any feedback. And here's where you put your points. We'll make that one 10 points. For this one, oh, I remember the question someone asked, yes. Um, for this one, what is the correct spelling? Um, we wanna click answer key. And we want to click this. And I thought for the feedback, you would tell them that rule, I before E except after C. I still remember that from elementary school. <clears throat> We're going to make this one 10 points. Now, if you wanted this one to be an open-ended question, that was what someone was asking about the scavenger hunt earlier. It said they put computer keyboard in instead of just keyboard. That tab in Flippity that um, I showed you with options, that, or no, it's not on the middle tab, it's on the first tab, that column with the answers, if you want to accept multiple answers um, and any of them can be correct, that's where you have the ability to do that. All right, if um, I then have it ready to go, when a student hits submit, it's going to tell them what their score is, but it's also going to put the information in here. It is also going to show you responses here. Google's great. It builds charts and graphs out of the responses. It lets you look at your quiz question by question to see how students are doing on each question, students plural. Then it'll have an individual uh, link you can click right here where you can look at each student's responses and print it out if you want to to put into a folder. Now how do you share it with the student? 
right here. You click send, you click link, you can shorten it, and you can copy it. And then you can drop that link for your students or use it with Google Classroom or Edmodo or whatever you like to use. I'm seeing a lot of activity in the chat box, so I feel like I need to, all right. Am I missing any questions? Yes, I, there is a font setting, I do believe. Equatio, um, let me type that into, that is a, uh, an add-on or a Chrome extension. I think it's an add-on that you add and I'll show you um, you see this? This is because I, it is a Chrome extension. It is because I have a Quatio and um, my here. So that gives me a toolbar that then I can type math questions into those. So it is turned on on my, on my Chrome extension bar. So that's what allowed me to do that. Do the students have to make a copy? No. No, the only way you would want to turn this into a copy link is if you wanted to share this quiz with another teacher. Then you could um, copy the link to the quiz and change edit to copy, and that would force a teacher to have to make a copy. Now, if you were doing a Google Doc or a Google, Google Sheet, yes, you would have to force the copy, right? But this same link will take each student to their own version. Yes, it is scheduled till 315. I was going to go ahead and copy this. If you want to see what it looks like, it's not the best quiz I ever wrote, but I'm dropping that link. So if you want to see how it would look to a student. All right. Google Forms in record time, right? And I think number six was Goose Chase. Goose Chase, um, would I show how to convert? the Google form, yes, I can do that while I'm here, certainly can. When you have built your form, you go to responses and right here, you tell it you want to view the responses in sheets because I've already created it. So that would just take me right here. If it were a new form and I hadn't done that yet, then it would create a new one. So now, so now I have two collectors. Um, but then you can, you know, you can um, spread like depending on the, uh, right now we just have multiple choice, so it would show up very easily. But if you had lengthier answers, then um, you could uh, change the formatting to make it fit. All right, let's talk about Goose Chase. Of all of them, this one um, I think there are easier ways to do scavenger hunts. I love goose chase though. It is one, is one of my favorite things to do. What makes it a little more complicated for some folks is you have to have, the students have to download an app in order to do goose chase. But, um, ooh, it's gotten jumpy. There we go. So I'm going to, um, go to how it works. And the free educational version allows five teams. Now you can be flexible on what team means. You could, you, you could do five individuals. You could do five teams of two students each or three students each. We typically like to do it in teams, especially when it was um, more in the same time and same space together. But we have done some team games using breakout rooms and meeting tools. And I didn't say that earlier, but of all the things that we have done, I think the, the option, the tool um, from the um, online meeting platforms has been the breakout rooms. Uh, people tell us they just um, engage so much more and build that community. Um, some people are hesitant to use it because they say, what if the students go in there and talk about things not related to the assignment? That's not the worst thing that can happen. If they're building those connections in that community and they eventually get around to doing the assignment, in my book, that's still a win because it might make them want to come back the next time, especially during times when people are so isolated. So 
Goose Chase EDU, you create the game. This is another one where you can borrow from what other people have right here, game library. You do not have questions. You have what are called missions. These are some examples of missions. Now, what's really neat about it is you ask the mission question, and then you decide if you want them to type a response, photograph a response, video a response, or drop a meet, drop a pin, uh, share a GPS location. So you have all those options and you can play it again like quiz is as a homework assignment. So we're not getting to do a lot of field trips these days. So maybe when people are out and about on their own, maybe you want them to photograph a right angle in their environment. Maybe you want them to find an example of parallel lines. Maybe you want them to take a video demonstrating a vocabulary word. All of those things um, are available and very easy once they have the app. So then you also then start the competition. When you're playing it as a group, it can be a lot of fun too because you have a board where the results are coming in. You know, so they're checking the board out occasionally, to see if their videos showed up or their answers showed up. And there's also a leaderboard. Now, if you're not ready for Goose Chase yet, you may want to do something um, as simple as having them do a scavenger hunt when you're meeting online with Zoom or Google Meet or WebEx or whatever it is that you use. You can give them something to go find. One that I saw done recently was find something in your environment that represents a goal that you have. And then they came back and if they were willing to show you know, with using the camera, they did that and explained what that goal was. If, um, if not, they could describe the object that they were holding. So um, lots of different options for that. And Padlet, we may have time to jump into Padlet and that would get us almost to the end. So real quick, how to build a Padlet. Let me jump in here. This is one we did last week. We had all these responses. People um, created the name of their pandemic band using this formula. And I noticed I had some fellow South Carolina people on here, but a shout out to them and a shout out to everybody else. You guys did a great job on that. I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. I am going to make a Padlet very quick. Lots of different things. I'm loving the timeline and the map, but I'm gonna choose the wall. It's what I use the most. It names it and puts these little funny taglines up there. I'm going to call this um, my favorite book. You'll notice when I did that, this opens up. This is how you edit your Padlet. So I'm going to call it um, my favorite book. The description, I usually put the directions there. I'm just going to abbreviate them so I... I know I'm short on time. So I, what I would do there is say, uh, enter your name, where you're from, what your favorite book is, and then um, find a video, a picture, a link, or something that uh, illustrates why this book is, um, is your favorite or what your favorite part of the book was, something you want them to do about the book. Now, here is where you have the copy to the clipboard. Um, I mean... <laughs> where you have the, the link to the Padlet and you can customize it. So if I were doing this, it's always gonna have this at the beginning of the link. And then I would put um, favorite book and it's gonna tell me if that one's available and it is. So if someone's having to type it, it is a little bit easier. Um, you can tell it where you want the most recent post in the beginning or at the end. Do you want people to be able to comment on it? Do you want them to be able to react to other people's posts? These are great toggles. Um, if you wanted to have the ability to, to review something before it shows up, you would click that and you can also turn on the filter profanity. Fortunately, I've never had to use that with adult educators. Where I went just now was wallpaper. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna go to pictures. And I have all of these that I can choose. You can even upload some if you want to. I like that one. So we're going to use the peacock today. All right. I am through editing. So I am going to click next. 
It says I'm set, but how do I share it? I'm going to go right here to share. And I caution you, make sure you check the privacy setting. I keep mine secret. Um, secret means that I can send a link. I think we lost your audio again, Mary. There we go. My crazy mouse. All right. Um, I am at 313. Did I show, did what, did I still have a uh, sound when I showed how to pick up the link? I think it dropped off right around then. If you want to just, can you go review that one more time? Yes. Um, okay. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to click share. And right here, I copy link to the clipboard or I can get a QR code. And that's how I could share that. I hope you heard the part about the privacy setting. You want it to be at least secret or public. And then here is where you tell people they can write or they can just read. Okay. And I will start checking the chat box for questions. I do want to thank everybody and thank you for your patience with my sound today. I think my mouse was all over the board and uh, I accidentally um, was cutting myself off. Oh, wow, it was for a few minutes. Um, please remember where that uh, you can, also copy the chat if you're not familiar with that there are three dots to the right of the chat box and that way you'll have links but you'll also have um, the link to the wakelet that has the slide deck in it as well um, i will go to my last slide If you'd like to chat your best takeaway, be sure and do that in the chat box. I love finding, hearing what people like the most. I knew we were going to be crunched for time, but you know what? We got to almost all of the tools. This is my contact information. So if there's another question you have, um, please feel free to write me. And the recording for this will be on CoAbe's um, webinar archive website. Mary, I want to thank you for another great presentation. Uh, that was fantastic. Um, I also want to thank Robert at Burlington English again. 